The hunt for Quan Chi had led Scorpion to the palace of Shang Tsung. Scorpion entered the palace through a hidden passage. As he made his way through the lower levels, he was discovered by the two Oni he had previously encountered while in the Nether Realm. Shang Tsung had secretly allied with Moloch and Draman as a backup defense against Quan Chi. The two Oni had been hidden in an underground chamber and were periodically fed mortals to keep them satisfied. Scorpion fought well, but was overpowered by Moloch and Draman. Although they could not consume the ninja specter, they devised another means for eliminating their foe that would satisfy their cruel nature. The Oni brought Scorpion before the portal to the heavens that Shang Tsung had tapped as a source of limitless souls. They hurled him into the Solnado, and his hellspawn body was ripped apart by the purity of that realm. Jax had a score to settle with the traitor he knew as Su Hao. Now revealed to be a member of the Red Dragon, Su Hao had infiltrated the Special Forces Outer World Investigation Agency and destroyed it with a miniature nuclear weapon. Making good on his promise, Jax eventually caught up with Su Hao and ripped the implant from his chest in retribution. Su Hao died a most painful death. The Alliance was successful in reviving the mummified remains of the Dragon King's undefeatable army. Shang Tsung, however, began to realize that his relevance in the partnership had evaporated once his talents for soul transplantation were no longer needed. The balance of power within the Deadly Alliance had seemingly been undone. Fearing betrayal, he secretly instructed Kano to steal Quan Chi's amulet in an attempt to gain control of the army. Since part of the soul transfer spell included the command to obey he who possesses the amulet, the army would obey only Shang Tsung and not Quan Chi once the amulet was in his possession. Amulet in hand, Shang Tsung revealed his betrayal to Quan Chi and commanded the army to destroy the sorcerer. Shang Tsung would succeed where others had failed. He would conquer the realms. He would conquer Earth. Rage fueled Kung Lao's thirst for revenge. The memory of holding his fellow monk's broken body on the Lei Tai of the Wuxi Academy grounds consumed him as he rained blow after blow down upon Shang Tsung. Kung Lao had finally mastered the attack Bo Raicho had taught him. The sorcerer could not withstand his whirlwind assault. Shang Tsung begged for mercy. Kung Lao granted him none. Upon his return to Earthrealm, Kung Lao stood before the modest shrine to Liu Kang, which had been erected by the Wuxi initiates during his absence in Outworld. He lit a stick of incense and placed it among the others already burning there. He bowed his head and prayed for safe passage to the afterlife for his friend and brother. With Shang Tsung's death, Liu Kang's spirit could rest peacefully. Earthrealm was safe once more, but at a terrible cost. The work of the White Lotus Society had become more important than ever. Li Mei had been promised that her people would be freed from enslavement if she could win the tournament held by the Deadly Alliance. Now that she had emerged victorious, the true purpose behind the tournament was finally revealed to her. Her soul would be the last one Shang Tsung needed to completely revive the Dragon King's lost army. Her people would never be freed, and Li Mei herself would remain trapped inside the mummified remains of a dead soldier, cursed to serve the Deadly Alliance forever. Ken 
Kenshi had finally caught up with Shang Tsung in Outworld. Years ago, Kenshi had been manipulated into releasing the souls of his warrior ancestors. Shang Tsung had consumed those souls and left Kenshi to die in the tomb. The ordeal left Kenshi blinded, but the sword of his ancestors led him out of the depths. To redeem himself, Kenshi had vowed to free his ancestors from their captor. He cut Shang Tsung down with his ancestral sword, and a blast of souls was instantly released. The spirits of the warrior kings re-entered the sword as Kenshi held it above his head. His duty fulfilled, he could now return to Earthrealm. The enormous heat and pressure of the lava burned out Cyrax's sensors almost immediately. He cast about blindly in the infernal pit, searching for the orb Nitara had sent him to locate. Cyrax found it resting upon a small submerged pedestal beneath the molten depths. As soon as he clambered to the surface, she demanded he hand over the orb. Nitara had promised to return Cyrax to Earthrealm once the orb had been retrieved. Taking her necklace in hand, she uttered a mystical incantation. A swirling portal opened around Cyrax had he only had time for a solemn bow before he was swept into the gateway. Su Hao reported to his superior, Movado, and informed him of his success in destroying the Special Forces Outer World Investigation Agency. Movado then informed Su Hao of his next objective. It seemed that Quan Chi was proving to be a powerful ally and was willing to aid the Red Dragon in its quest for domination of Earth. In a show of good faith, Mavado agreed to destroy Quan Chi's enemies. The sorcerer suspected betrayal from Shang Tsung. There was evidence that Shang Tsung had allied with the two Oni, known as Moloch and Ramen. Su Hao's new orders were to eliminate the sorcerer Shang Tsung before the only eliminated Quan Chi. After the destruction of the Deadly Alliance, Sonya searched for the missing Special Forces agent Kenshi. She finally discovered him badly beaten and near death, apparently from hook-like wounds in his ribcage. She managed to return him to the rendezvous point where I transported them back to Earthrealm. Upon her return, Sonya was promoted to general and given a choice of command. She handpicked a team to deal with new terrorist threats located on Earth, while in Outworld, Special Agent Kenshi had learned of a new threat to peace. The Red Dragon had awakened. Once again, the threat to Earthrealm has been vanquished. The Deadly Alliance is no more. What dangers lie in the future I can no longer foresee. Perhaps the Dragon King will in fact return. Perhaps the depths of the Nether Realm will spew forth a legion of Oni. Even the vampire people pose a threat to peace now that Outworld is in chaos. But one thing is certain Earth Realm must be protected. I have abandoned my status as Elder God to aid these mortals and act defiant of the heavens. I will instead remain here on Earth as God of Thunder. As they traveled back to the portal that would return them to Earthrealm, Sub-Zero revealed to Frost that she had been an integral part in the destruction of the Deadly Alliance and that he was proud to have her as a member of the Lin Kuei clan. But unknown to Sub-Zero, Frost's true intention for joining the Lin Kuei was to become Grand Master herself. She used her Ice Blast to temporarily immobilize him and rip the Dragon Medallion from his chest. 
As she held the medallion, she felt power surge through her body. Lacking the strength and discipline required to control the medallion's immense power, she was consumed by her own freezing ability. The Deadly Alliance was successful in reviving the mummified remains of the Dragon King's undefeatable army. It would appear that nothing could stand in the way of Shang Tsung and Guang Chi as they began their domination of the realms. Unfortunately for Shang Tsung, however, Quan Chi had no further need for the partnership. Once Shang Tsung had finally revived the last of the mummified warriors, Quan Chi closed the portal to the heavens and effectively shut off Shang Tsung's endless supply of souls. Quan Chi then instructed Kano to assassinate Shang Tsung in a surprise weapon attack. With their captor cut wide open, the thousands of souls Shang Tsung had consumed in the past spewed forth and swirled around the room. Quan Chi came to the realization that if Kano could so easily turn on Shang Tsung, he could also turn on Quan Chi himself. Quan Chi used his sorcery to drain the life from Kano and left his body where it fell. Immediately, one of the lingering souls shot into Kano's body. To Quan Chi's surprise, the man standing before him was no longer the black dragon thug known as Kano. Kano's body now contained the soul of the Shaolin monk, Liu Kang. For many years, Movado's Red Dragon Clan had been secretly engineering the destruction of their rivals, the Black Dragon. Through careful manipulation, Movado had used the special forces to unwittingly aid them in this task. In return for eliminating Kenshi for the Deadly Alliance, Movado was finally granted his battle with the last known member of the Black Dragon, Kano. After a long, brutal fight, Movado emerged victorious, and all traces of the Black Dragon had been erased. Impressed with the fighting skill and discipline of Movado, as well as other members of his clan, Quan Chi realized the potential the Red Dragon held for staging the eventual invasion of Earthrealm. In return for their continued assistance, he offered crucial information about a new threat to Movado's Red Dragon clan the Lin Kuei. Upset by the way his adventures had been portrayed in the past, Johnny Cage found a loophole in his contract and left MCM Studios during the production of Mortal Kombat, The Death of Johnny Cage. He then used his own money to fund the production of his next movie, which is rumored to be the true story of his latest adventures in Outworld. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance broke all records in its first weekend in theaters and made Johnny Cage extremely wealthy. The movie told the true story of how Johnny Cage single-handedly saved the world from the threat of Quan Chi and Shang Tsung's Deadly Alliance. Kitana's longtime enemy Shao Kahn was dead, and the alliance between Shang Tsung and Quan Chi was defeated with the help of warriors from Earthrealm. Although there was peace once more throughout the realms, all was not right for Kitana. Saddened by the death of Goro, she attended a ceremony in the Kuotan Palace to honor her fallen friend and ally. Following Shokan tradition, Prince Goro's body was lowered into the molten rock contained within the throne room itself. As Kitana said goodbye to her wartime ally, she also held a moment of silence for Liu Kang and secretly wished he had joined her in Edenia so many years ago. sulfur stench that filled the chamber. Reptile could smell that Natara and Cyrax had been there recently. 
there was no sign of them now, except for some scattered glass shards and a residual trace of strong magical energies. His revenge would have to wait. Suddenly, an expectant hush filled the chamber as energy cascaded around what appeared to be a dragon embryo. The tiny dragon stretched and the egg cracked. A beam of energy ripped out from inside and lanced into reptile. His world was filled with a roaring power as his squamous body was twisted and transformed. The ancient prophecy had been fulfilled. The Dragon King had returned. After what seemed like an eternity, Cyrax finally emerged from the lava, holding the orb that had bound Nitara's realm to Outworld for ages. At last, it was within her grasp. She would be able to free her people from Shao Kahn's imprisonment. Fulfilling her end of the bargain, she sent Cyrax back to his Earthrealm home in exchange for the orb. Nitara stared into the orb. It seethed with the power trapped within. She raised it above her head and then smashed it to the floor. It shattered with an inhuman soul-rending howl. Its horrible energy exploded away and tore her consciousness from her. She awoke later for the first time on her native soil. Sent by the sorcerer Shang Tsung, the two Oni known as Draman and Moloch confronted Quan Chi, enraged that he had tried to leave them stranded in the bowels of the Nether Realm. In the battle that ensued, Draman leapt at Quan Chi, and both combatants stumbled into the inner sanctum chamber. Moments later, Draman emerged from the chamber, altered from his previous form. After defeating the Deadly Alliance, Sub-Zero returned to the new temple of the Lin Kuei with the severely injured ninja, Frost. A short time later, I visited the temple to commend him for his victory in Outworld and to express my gratitude for all his assistance. With Sub-Zero now the Grand Master of the Lin Kuei, Earthrealm will be well protected. Raicho looked gruff, but beamed inwardly. With their victory over the Deadly Alliance complete, he and Kung Lao had liberated Outworld from its latest threat. Despite the years that had passed since training his last student, his skills had proven useful once more. He was elated, but it would be inappropriate to express such emotions in front of his newest apprentice. Kung Lao invited his master to return with him to Earthrealm to teach more warriors at the Wuxi Academy. The success of his apprentice gave him renewed confidence in his training skills and, for the first time, a clear purpose in life. Boraicho offered only token resistance. He accepted the offer because the defenders of Earthrealm could certainly use his help, but more importantly, because Earthrealm's rice wine put Outworld's liquor to shame. Kano and Sonya had fought before. Although Kano was humiliated by his defeat at her hands so many years ago, this time the outcome would be different. Kano had stolen Quan Chi's amulet at the request of Shang Tsung. With the amulet in his possession, Kano came to the realization that he was now in total control of the revived undefeatable army. Rather than hand the amulet and the army over to Shang Tsung, Kano kept them for himself and used the army to ambush Sonya, ending their long rivalry once and for all. Half 
having been enslaved through sorcery to guard the molten incubation chamber, Blaze was finally freed once the dragon egg had hatched. He then resumed the quest he had undertaken before being subdued by his captors.